Listen to what the famous Harvard evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould said about the fossil record. The extreme rarity of transitional forms in the fossil records persists as the trade secret of paleontology. This is a very interesting quote, however it is completely out of context. To begin with, Gould is referring to particular clades within the false record, not the false record as a whole. Indeed, Gould realizes that we have many, many transitional forms. In fact, he says in the May 1981 issue of Discover, which he reprinted in the Hen's Teeth and Horse's Toes, he says, Since we proposed punctuated equilibria to explain, to explain trends, it's infuriating to be quoted again and again by creationists. Whether through design or stupidity, I do not know, as admitting that the fossil record includes no transitional forms. Transitional forms are generally lacking at the species level, but they are abundant between larger groups. Yet a pamphlet entitled, Harvard Scientists and Green Evolution is a Hoax, states, the facts of punctuated e equilibrium which Gould and Eldridge are forcing Darwinists to swallow the fit picture Brian insisted on, and which God revealed to us in the Bible. Once again, this is, to begin with, bearing false witness, which is a pretty big sin for most Christians. Second of all, it's, it's not even, it's nowhere near what Gould meant. Not only did he speak about it over, what, 26 years ago, correcting that? They know this, that is, Comfort and Cameron, and they still publish this. This was 25 years ago that Gould elaborated on this, and they didn't correct it. Why? Because it's through, as Gould put it, design or stupidity. They are relying on you not knowing any better. Have you ever been mystified as to why human beings and apes have so many similar features? After all, compare our hands to the hands of apes. They're very similar, and our feet are a lot the same. In fact, we can make many of the same facial expressions and other things that apes can do. To prove this point, we hired an orangutan for the day and had some fun. Check this out. When I'm happy, my face goes something like this. When I'm embarrassed, if I don't agree, if I want to be nasty, if I've heard a bad joke, if I've heard enough, If I'm feeling affectionate, if I agree, does this prove that men evolved from apes? No, not at all. Think of it like this. Think of the biplane and the 747 jumbo jet. They're both very similar. After all, they both have wings, they both have landing gear, cockpits. Does that mean that the jet evolved from the little biplane? Not at all. It just means they have a common designer. The designer used a similar blueprint for each one. Same with us. God, the creator of the world and the universe, is our common designer. He simply used a similar blueprint when creating the hands and feet and facial expressions of men and apes.
This is a fallacious analogy created by Cameron to further his point. Biplanes and 747s and basically any inanimate objects don't mutate, don't reproduce, and they're not subject to the same biological conditions that biological organisms are. It's comparing apples and oranges. No, it's not even comparing apples and oranges. It's comparing apples and fake oranges. So it, it's a completely false analogy for one. Um, second of all, let's actually take a look at the similarities between apes and humans in the sense of all those facial features that Kirk Cameron um, so kindly pointed out that we have in between. That actually kind of takes a lot of homology in the sense of, do you realize exactly how many muscles there are in the face that, that are required to, to pouting, for example, is an extremely complex um, motion. You know, it requires input from the mentalis muscle, which is right below the, or right above the chin, rather, the orbicularis oris, and many others to, to simply pout. And the fact that we have the neurological and the, the musculature that, that is exactly the same and able to do so is a pretty strong testament. But overlooking that, Cameron completely neglects the fact that it's not the similarities, it's not the differences, it's the pattern which emerges. And his argument is essentially the same one that is seen time and time again of the same designer, same genes. And if you want to see exactly why this is false, because I won't go into it here, I made a video on it. It's in my channel. Check it out. It's called Why Same Designer and Same Genes is Not a Valid Argument. And it completely addresses this issue. Despite the fact that there is no evidence when it comes to the theory of evolution, we're continually told that primates are our relatives. So we decided we'd have a little fun and call a number of airlines and ask if we could have a relative fly on the plane with us. U.S. Airways Office of Consumer Affairs, this is Ken. American Airlines, Nicole. Caroline Serrini, hello. Chester, how can I help you? I'm flying with a friend, um, uh, and, and I'd like to take a relative with us. <laughs> he works in the movie industry, so he'll have two managers with him, and the reason for the managers is he's a little slow intellectually. He's um, also got physical problems with underdeveloped feet. He can't stand upright. Uh, I imagine you guys can see where this train wreck is going, and I'm not even going to dignify it with a response. However, regarding the first part of um, his comments regarding that we are related to primates, well, Actually, as Ken Miller, and you can check this out in, in one of my videos as far as um, We Are Primates is the, uh, the title of it. It's by Ken Miller. But we were classified as primates not by Darwin. It has nothing to do with evolution. Linnaeus classified us as primates hundreds of years ago, and he was a staunch creationist. Um, he was a, a theist in the broadest, broadest, most you know, definitive sense. So it has nothing to do with evolution or God or anything like that. This is a creationist classifying us as primates. We are primates, ladies and gentlemen. Despite the fact that airlines won't allow primates on planes for obvious reasons, there are some scientists who would have us believe that primates are just about as intelligent as human beings. So Kirk and I took an orangutan to lunch to see if it was true. <laughs> 